The member for Pasco Vale. Yeah. Order, order, order in the gallery, please. Thank you, Dep thank you, Deputy Speaker, and, th and congratulations to you on your appointment and elevation. And I congratulate the Speaker on her appointment for this term as well. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation, and recognise their continued custodianship and connection to land, water and country. I particularly acknowledge the co-chairs of Victoria's First People's Assembly, Auntie Geraldine Atkinson and Marcus Stewart. Here in Victoria, we are delivering on the Uluru Statement from the Heart through voice, treaty and truth. I extend my congratulations to the Premier, the Ministry and all Labor members on being elected for a historic third term of the Andrews Labor Government, which I'm so grateful to be part of. I commend the Leader of the Opposition on his appointment and extend the very best wishes to all parliamentarians um, from all sides who I look forward to working with, uh, particularly the class of 2022. Speaker, it's the greatest honour of my life to be standing here in this chamber as the new member for Pasco Vale, Coburg and parts of Brunswick West. As a son of migrant parents and as a lifelong local of these suburbs, where my wife Anna and I are now raising our own family, it's truly humbling to have been chosen as the community's representative. As the new local member, first and foremost, my priority will be to serve the whole community, every constituent, as best I can, regardless of their political persuasion, background or circumstance. I'll be striving to make Pascoe an even better and fairer place to live, learn, work, raise a family and to retire in. Speaker, I'm grateful to the local Labor members and the electorate of Pascoval, and I'm so proud of the positive local campaign that we ran that brought the community together. Yeah. Labor achieved a swing towards us in primary votes at the ballot box, including the highest primary vote across 20 of the 23 election booths. I thank the Victorian Labor Party, whom I've been a member of for many years, and the local members for their ongoing support. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Rarely before has a Victorian Labor government received such a comprehensive third term endorsement. And even rarer still is it to have so many Labor members sitting on this side of the chamber as well as on that side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> this is a rare gift which we must never ever take for granted and work harder than ever before to build on. In being elected as a sixth Labor member for Pasco Vale, I'm cog cognizant of the immense contribution of my predecessors, from the most recent member, Lizzie Blanthorne, to Christine Campbell and Calvin Thompson, who all graciously served our community. I thank you for your ongoing counsel and support. And to previous members who represented parts of the area as well, Cardinal Cardley, Peter Gavin, Tim Reid, Tom Roper, thank you all for your service. Speaker, it gives me immense pride to represent the suburbs of Pascoval, Coburg and Brunswick West, which have a deep and diverse history. Located on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people, situated between the Mooney Ponds Creek and Mary Creek, from Boundary Road to Hope Street, the Pascoval electorate is nestled in the heart of Melbourne's vibrant northern suburbs. The community has a rich First Nations, multicultural, manufacturing, working class, industrial, creative, activist history that has helped shape the identity of modern day Victoria. Just like the bluestone line streets, our people are as hard working and resilient as they come, yet as empathetic as can be. First settled by migrants seeking refuge from harsh times in England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales from 1837, the area went on to grow around what, what has be, become known as Pentridge Prison, an institution older than this state and indeed this parliament. Since then, the area has evolved to capture the very best of what our state has to offer, multiculturalism, with generations of migrants calling Pascoval home, including many of Italian, Greek, Lebanese, Turkish and Maltese heritage. Today, almost 50% of local residents have parents who were born overseas. We have a large second generation uh, community of families, including both my wife and I. And we continue to welcome new generations of migrants from India, China, Nepal, Pakistan and many, many other places. Speaker, I became involved in politics because I have long believed that we all play a role in building a better future. I joined Labor because it is the party that fosters aspirations, leaving no one behind. The party with fairness and equality at its very core, the light on the hill. It has been the policies of Labor governments that have given my family and I the opportunity to be standing in this chamber. My mum was born in 1946, growing up in a small town of Pianopoli in the province of Catanzara in Calabria. Hey. <laughs> having graduated, as, as was the member for Mill Park, having graduated from primary school, the highest level, ex level expected for girls in those days in southern Italy. My dad, Pietro, was born not far away in Nicastro. 
And answering the calls originally put out by then Labor Prime Minister Ben Chifley and Immigration Minister Arthur Corwell, my family migrated to Australia aboard the ships the Galileo Galilei and the Angelina Lauro. Like so many other post-World War II migrants, including my mother-in-law, Pauline Owens, who departed Northern Ireland to flee the Troubles, or my father-in-law, Andreas Crisanthu, who left his homeland of Cyprus, migrants of that era came with nothing but a suitcase on their backs, a suitcase that was filled with dreams, dreams for a better future, not just for themselves, but their children and their grandchildren. They came with very little in their pockets, but a whole lot in their hearts to give to their new country, which was willing to embrace them so enthusiastically. Over their working lives, my parents held numerous blue-collar jobs across the north. My mum sewed and packed dusters, made belts and women's trousers, and served surgeons of the day in the old doctor's dining room, dining room just around the corner from here at St Vincent's Hospital. My dad worked as a packer, a bus tyre repairman, followed by stints at Vizzy and Ford whilst waitering in the evening. My godfather, Pietro Perra, worked an incredible 40 years at the Ford factory in Broadmeadows. We were raised in a very modest California bungalow in Jamison Street, Coburg, where we largely grew up speaking Italian with very few luxuries, but with plenty of love and plenty of homemade pasta sauce. <laughs> we, were working, we were as working class as you could get. Along with the support of my parents, it was the safety net sustained by successive Labor governments that provided us with the opportunities we needed to aspire. I was the beneficiary of a good public education attending Coburg West Primary and Northcote High School, and I was taught by the wonderful teachers who are here in the gallery today, Agatha Blati, my grade four teacher, Helen Anderton, <laughs> and Gary Israel, my former principal. <laughs> Whitlam and Hawke's reforms to education gave me the chance to be the first of my family to complete year 12 and then go on to graduate from university at RMIT. When I started my first job in hospitality, it was the minimum wage standards and conditions that helped me to stand on my own two feet. When my parents fell on tough times work-wise, and there was plenty, it was the social safety net that provided us the support to get to the next paycheck. When we got sick, it was Medicare that kept us healthy. Growing up in the northern suburbs during the 1990s, I also learned the experience about not having Labor governments in place. As Jeff Kennett pursued the Victoria on the Move agenda, it was the northern suburbs that wrote the cheque and paid the price through school closures, cuts and sell-offs. We will never forget. Okay. Speaker, it was through these experiences I was inspired to become politically active and community-minded. So when our area did not have a dedicated youth hub, I had the opportunity to lead the Oxygen Youth Centre project, opening Mary Beck's then first ever co-located youth centre with youth services. When the Robertson Reserve and Reynard Street neighbourhood house were experiencing challenges, I had the opportunity to become chair and help revitalise the house to put it back on track. When our community campaigned to reopen a year 7 to 12 high school in Coburg, thanks to Kate Hall, who's in the gallery today too, as well as to save the Edgars Creek, to stand up for pensioners or maintain the curfew at Essendon Airport, I had the opportunity to support locals to secure these outcomes. Workwise, I've had the privilege to work across all three levels of government. Beginning as Kelvin Thompson's electorate officer and advisor for trade and schools during his parliamentary secretary days. I was then the senior advisor to the former Minister for Tourism, Major Events, Sport and Veterans Affairs, John Aaron, otherwise known as the Minister for Everything. <laughs> I also had the pleasure of working as a, in senior advocacy roles at Brimbank Council, CPR Communications and Darabin City Council. But Speaker, this is also not the first time that I've proudly put up, put up my hand to serve the state. Growing up, I was also called on to be the goalkeeper for the Victorian football or soccer team in those days. <laughs> and yes, for the record, before you hear it from anyone else, I also was the 2005 Junior Mr Victoria bodybuilding champion. <laughs> <laughs> I, al I always knew I'd be back to serve the state. <laughs> <laughs> Through every role, I have gained valuable insights, all of which provided me with the foundations I hope to be an effective local member. Speaker, I'm committed to helping build a better community through delivering on job, education, transport, health and social justice outcomes. I've been elected to be a champion for the community. Every Victorian speaker deserves the security of a job with a decent wage. Victorian Labor has prioritised job creation since 2014, with almost 600,000 new jobs now created and with statewide unemployment now at historically low levels. However, according to Northlink's Future Workforce Melbourne's North report, our region will require at least another 182,000 local jobs uh, by 2031 to close the gap between local jobs and resident workers. Despite Mary Beck's employment, skill and education outcomes having continued to improve over time, around 15% of employed people actually live and work locally, 
one of the lowest employment self-sufficiency rates for any LGA. I believe we have a once-in-a-generation opportunity to address these challenges by working towards making Coburg a jobs hub for Melbourne's north. With Labor's new world-class stations at Coburg and Moreland, the $17 million new science and tech hub at Coburg High, the $6 million redevelopment of Coburg City Oval and the transformation of Pentridge now into a visitor destination, we now have the catalyst projects to begin realising this vision. Speaker, as I mentioned, I am the proud product of our local education system. And as a local dad, I know just how important families value the quality of local kinders and schools. I'm very much looking forward to the rollout of free kinder in my community, which is being accompanied with a $10 million investment to upgrade 11 local kinders. I'm also very much looking forward to working through the development of a new Mary Beck education plan for, for the North. This plan will help to ensure we continue to meet the future needs of local secondary students and families, building on the $150 million Labor has invested into upgrading every local school since 2014. Speaker, I'm a firm believer that all Victorians deserve access to safe and sustainable transport networks. In this regard, I'm also proud that it has been a Labor government that has finally removed the dangerous level crossings in Coburg. Thank you, Minister. At Moreland, Raynard Street, Munro Street and Bell Street. And that Labor is building the Metro Rail Tunnel, which will increase the capacity for both the Upfield Line and the Craigieburn Line. I also welcome the opportunity to advocate, however, for further transport improvements across the community. Firstly, on the Upfield Railway Line. While we have committed to the removal of a further eight crossings through Brunswick, opportunity, opportunities exist for additional improvements along the line, which, if fully realised, can actually become the economic development spine for the whole of the Northern Corridor. Advocating for improvements along the Craigieburn line will also be a priority of mine. Thirdly, the commissioning of Melbourne's Northern Bus Review will help us improve local bus routes and patronage. Fourth, with many young families and elderly residents now living in the area, Opportunities to improve road and pedestrian safety, as well as accessibility for all communities, will remain a priority. And lastly, as a proud TWU member, I will also be focused on ensuring that we as a state continue to elevate our role in how we support and recognise transport, gig economy and aviation workers. Speaker, our health and wellbeing is paramount, regardless of the age, background or circumstance. Everyone in our community deserves access to quality healthcare. And it's health and community workers that make up the biggest industry that local residents in my area are employed in, almost 14%. Many of these workers are the backbone of our hospital, social services and medtech sectors across Melbourne. I've drawn off many of them. <laughs> At a local level, there are significant opportunities to improve jobs and services for health workers as well as patients, which I welcome the chance to pursue through the delivery of a new Royal Melbourne and Royal Women's Hospital, upgrading the Northern and Austin hospitals, our plans for a new mental health hub in Coburg, finally partnering with Mary Community Health, the proposed Coburg Health Precinct project, which will create 1,000 jobs, and the rollout of free nursing and health studies. Along with more health services, our local sporting clubs will also play a big role in preventative health outcomes. Whether it's through the rollout of female-friendly change rooms uh, or other projects, I look forward to working with them. Speaker, the environment is fundamental to all life on Earth, and real action on the environment is necessary if we are to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Bringing back the SEC will help us to transition our economy to net, zeros, net zero emissions whilst keeping the lights on, businesses going and workers in jobs. And likely I, work, I look forward to working on a whole number of opportunities, including protecting and enhancing the Moody Ponds Creek, Mary Creek and Eggers Creek, improving tree canopy cover across the north and progressing opportunities around the circular economy and recycling, as well as incentivising local residents to transition away from gas and support the take-up of electric-powered households, buses and vehicles. Speaker, I'll be committed to building a fairer and more socially just community through all of these and many other priorities, whether it's mental health, cost of living, family violence, I'll always, always be standing with people. My journey to this place has been made possible by a village of people over so many years. Firstly, I extend my eternal heartfelt thanks and appreciation to the people of Pascaval for entrusting me to be their local representative. Thank you to the dedicated Labor Pascaval team and the hundreds of local Labor Party members, true believers and volunteers. While there are so many to mention, I'd like to give a special thanks to Wayne Swan, Richard Miles, Jana Stewart and John Aaron for launching my campaign events. To the La Trobe University and Young Labor activists. To the de facto member for Wills, Mimi Tamburino. And the many other campaign volunteers, I say thank you. To the sporting clubs and multicultural community members. A special mention, though, to the Persian Iranian community. Your support is appreciated and I'm proud to stand in solidarity with you as you fight for freedom in Iran. My thanks to the Victorian Tasmanian branch of the Transport Workers Union, in particular former Secretary John Berger, 
Current Secretary Mike McNess and Assistant Secretary Mem Suleiman. Thank you for your friendship and all that you do. Thank you to all across the Labor movement who have continued to help and support me over the years, including past and current colleagues and community organisations, but namely Senator Raf Ciccone, Michael Donovan, Sam Ray, Rob Mitchell, Anthony Carbines, Nat Suleiman, Matt Fregan, Sarah Connolly, Ella George, Kelvin Thompson, Christine Campbell, Judy Madigan, S Stephen Conroy, Phil Daladakis, Marie Van Vakimel, and so many others. Thank you. A special thanks, of course, to my wife and best friend, Anna, and our daughters, Raffaella and Cleopatra, for their love and support as I dedicated myself to the campaign and to now serving the community. Thank you for your sacrifices. I love each and every one of you beyond words. Anna is also a successful small businesswoman in her own right, and she truly inspires me every day. To my parents for all their hard work and sacrifices, to Lorenzo, Roberto and Gianluca, and to all of my extended family and friends, many of who are here or watching online, you know who you are and thank you for your lifetime support. And to those who are no longer with us, but are watching from the other side of the stars, including my brother-in-law, Tom Owens, Senator Mehmet Tillam, and others who left us far too soon. In conclusion, Speaker, as members of Parliament, we are given an honourable opportunity by the people of our electorates to work for the betterment of those that reside in our suburbs, the small business owners, the workers, the families, children, young people, the elderly, and the disadvantaged. I thank the people of Pascaval for placing their confidence in me, and I will work every day as hard as I can to do justice to that trust. Now let's do this, Pascaval. Thank you.